If all the moms will come up, if all the moms will come up, stand right here facing that way.
God, I know that it's not easy for some that have lost a parent or maybe didn't have a good parent. But we can rejoice in the fact that we have air in our lungs because you breathe life into us through a mom. And we thank you for that today, Lord. And with my mom being 3,000 miles away, Lord, I thank you for her. And I thank you for these beautiful and amazing women here today. God, I pray that you bless everything that they do this year and bring glory to your name through them. Amen. Give them a hand one more time. So good to us. <coughs> uh, it's supposed to be. Praise God. I have to praise the Lord this morning. I shared during my class when I was teaching this morning. I have had a healing. When I had the flu, I was having really problems with my eyes. About a short time ago, I shared with Sister Vicki. What happened is I have a condition that is dealing with my silent migraines. When that comes, sometimes it causes a little stroke in the back of my brain. It's a mini stroke or a TIA. Well, when I went to the eye doctor, he said, oh, you know, we've done all the exams that we can do, but it's not your eyes. I said, the last one that came on, uh, the test that we took, it showed a something in your brain. Two days later, I had this thing that comes over me when I have a silent headache. And I said, in the name of Jesus, I will not accept that. It wasn't but a few seconds, it was gone.
uh, of another one of those hearing God's voice testimonies this morning. Uh, can I just say this to somebody out there? You need to determine today that your glass is half full, not half empty. You need to determine today that what God has given you is going to grow into everything that you ever need. And that you need to see it for what it is and not for what the enemy's doing. Somebody give him praise one more time. And then I'm going to preach short and we'll get you out of here. Uh, shortest message I ever preached. You don't believe me, do you? But I'm going to attempt to anyway. And I have a video clip for you real quick. A two-minute video clip. Make sure you turn it up, guys. The air conditioners. Come on, Mr. Nelson. Big money, Nelson. I think you're the only man in the church that drives a Mercedes. Uh, so, about a month and a half ago, I'm reading the newspaper, and I see a, a friend of mine's name in there that I used to hang out with back in my addiction days. And uh, his name was in the paper for doing some addiction type stuff, I guess I'll say. <laughs> so, you use your imagination there. Um, so, I... I uh, thought only by the grace of God is my name not still in that newspaper for doing that kind of stuff. So I felt led like to reach out to this person and at least invite him to the church. Come will help me and invite him to church. So I got his phone number and I tried to call him and it had been uh, disconnected. So about two weeks ago I happened to run into him. And I said, hey man, you've been on my part. Uh, I'd just like to invite you to church. And thinking I'm going to have a great moment of everything's going to go great. He looked at me and he's like, ah, I don't want no parts of church. I'm not a church guy. I don't want to do that. That's not me. I thought, wow, okay, well, just let you know that the doors are open for you. So, uh, throw away kind of dejected, thinking, wow, that didn't go near the way I had a plan. Uh, so, yesterday, I happened to run into him again. He comes running up to my truck and said, man, he said, I just wanted to thank you for caring about me so much. To invite me to church. He said, I've had a few days to think about it. And, uh, you know, he said, you probably be seeing me in your church sooner than later. And it gave me a chance to also share my testimony with him and, uh, you know, tell him that God just flat delivered me, took the addiction away from me. And it could do the same for him. So, um, all I'm saying, the reason I wanted to tell you this is just plant a seed, you know, and let, let God do the watering and do the changing of hearts. That's, that's not our job. Our job is to expand on that just a little bit, you've got to first hear God's voice, and then you've got to follow what he tells you to do. So many times today, there's so many voices that come in our heads, so many voices that come in our heads from the television, from the, the news channels, you name it, there's voices that come in our head, and the enemy wants to confuse us. So when God is calling you to speak, and more often than not, believe it or not, it's more one-on-one -on -one most times than it is any other time. But when God is telling you, I want you to speak, I want you to share, hear God's voice and do that. I can share another testimony with you this week from Coach. Uh, Coach gave a word to someone this week, and, and it was amazing to see what happens when we begin to see God move when God's people begin to walk in what God has for them, it changes everything. Amen. So the little video clip I showed you from a 2006 movie called Facing the Giants, maybe you've seen it, maybe you haven't. Uh, hopefully you have. It's an amazing movie. But that one word from one man altered the course of an entire school. It changed everything. You say, well, that's a movie. Well, let me tell you how it really works. One word from one person can change everything. This week, I have studied everything from Genesis to Revelation. Tom, I wrote more sermons this week than I had them in a month. And at about 10 o'clock last night, I laid down in the bed and I said, God, I don't know. I'm going to stand up in the morning and tell them I have nothing to say. 
because you have given me nothing. And I wasn't being mean, I was heartbroken. And I turned on my TV and facing the giants is all. And God begins to speak to me. And he begins to show me things for this morning. It's not a long message, but I want to share with you what he gave me. Psalms chapter 18. Psalms chapter 18. I love the testimonies. Even though they're short, I love it when we can share this is what God's done. This is what God's done. Miss Sarah over here said that uh, we had a talk this week, uh, last Monday, and she's got a testimony I'll share with you real quick. You ready? I told her, I said, now that you're stepping up for God and some things in your life, the enemy's going to step up his game. Well, she called back and said, boy, you nailed that one. <laughs> she said, I could not imagine the things that went wrong this week, but you know what? At least she was prepared, right? Amen. <coughs> Psalms chapter 18 began with verse 1. Uh, we'll just sit. There's three verses. <coughs> I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so I shall be saved from my enemies. Father, touch the remainder of our time together. In your precious name, amen. In that movie, and I know it's a movie, but he quoted this. He went out into a field, that coach, and he read these verses. And he stopped and said this to God. God, I trust you with everything. And I'm going to follow you with my whole heart. And I'm going to leave the results up to you. Now I want you to catch this. So many times as a pastor I'm praying for you. And I tell God how I want it done. And I tell him the results I want. And what I do sometimes is take it out of God's hand. Because I am so desperate to see God move in your lives. And what this man was doing is, he had not fully committed everything to God. And once you commit everything to God, it takes the monkey off your back. You no longer have the pressure of trying to make something happen that God is planning to do by himself. And so what happened when I was reading this and this scripture came up and I looked it up and it says this is a psalm of David to the musicians. This is a song that will be written and sung. And it will be written the day that David overcome all of his enemies. And David starts this song by saying, God, paraphrasing, I'm going to give you everything. I trust you with all of it. I trust you with every ounce of it. And I'm going to love you no matter what the results. I'm going to love you no matter what the results. In my life, when my dad passed away, I went out on the front porch and I was mad at God. And I told him so. He's got big shoulders, he can handle it, right? I said, I'm mad at you! I love you, but I'm mad at you. And later he showed me that my dad, had he lived any longer, might have walked away. <clears throat> this was the perfect moment in time for him to leave this earth. He was closer to God than he'd ever been. But I wanted it different. <clears throat> I say that to say this to you. There are people here today that need to hear this. It's time you trust God with it. It's time you stop trying to figure it out. And say, God, come here, Manny. I'm almost done. This sermon you can't get mad at, it's my fault. God, I trust you 
and man. I trust you and man. I trust you and man. But until I let go of Manny to God, God can't do anything to fix the situation. Until I can say, God, I trust you with him. And I'm going to leave the results up to you. I can't do this, but you can. And I'm going to give it to you. And I'm going to trust you with it. And God has an open door for you. But we've got to be able to give it to him. And let him do the rest. Now what happens in Manny's life and in his family's life is no longer my responsibility. <coughs> Now it's God's responsibility. And God wants to look good in every situation. So he's going to do the best for the situation. Amen? Amen. It may not look the best from my point of view. But as long as I hold on to it, he can never fix it. It's absolutely an issue of trust. Nothing more. You can hop out if you want, or you can lay there if you like. <laughs> As your pastor and your friend, I'm telling you today, in the short message, I'm telling you today that God wants you to let go of some things. You've been holding on for so long that it's hindering His work in the situation. And He wants you to let go and trust Him because he wants to fix it. If you saw the movie, the coach that couldn't win a ball game won two state championships in a row. I'm not telling you God's going to give you a state championship, but what I am telling you is this. He will give you peace in the storm to know that he's got this. If you're willing to give it to him. Say with me if you will. Father, if there's someone here that needs salvation today, today is the day. If there's someone in here that needs deliverance, victory, healing, you've already spoken victory over us, Lord. God, but I am trusting you with the lives of these men and women. I can't carry their burdens, but I can carry them to you. And I leave the results in your hands. And I'm going to love you no matter what. And they're going to love you, Lord. No matter the results, we're expecting good results because you promise good results in your word. As we open this altar, I pray that you minister to your people today. Let them hand it to you and let you take care of it. In your precious and holy name, amen. amen. As they play a song, we're going to open this altar. What are you carrying that you can't carry? What are you holding on to?